Mine's okay, on. now I'm live. It's on mute. Yeah, they Hello. were on mute. Ooh. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to a very special episode of the Coding Train with a guest. Hello. Shirley Wu. I would I would say you could blow the train whistle, but I think that's not sanitary. So. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a bell. You can ring it once. Ooh. You just Why only once? Well, I don't know. Cause you can do it more than once. There you go. Okay. Um, there are sounds on. Sorry, we had a little um, some technical difficulties in getting started because I'm not used to it. <laughs> so this is a little awkward. We're going to kind of figure this out as we go. Yes. Um, one thing I'll tell you is that, uh, I have this tendency to like look over here 
because uh, a little behind the scenes here, this is where I have the monitor and I can see the chat um, and we can like sort of see what the mic levels are. But if we stand like this the whole time, we're looking that way. Okay. So I try to talk to the picture over there okay. or the camera. I but you can also just talk, we can talk to each yeah. other. I like it. two people. <laughs> I will get to introducing Shirley in a minute. Let me just kind of like lay some, uh, 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 just sort of like give you the context of what's about to happen here today. I uh, will note it's around 4.15 p.m. Eastern time. Mm -hmm. There is an event happening in the space of NYU at 6 p.m. So we yes. have to end around 5 or 10 of. And if for some reason everything goes wrong, we don't finish, we'll come back another time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> But yeah. that's what's going to happen today. But we'll try our best. Um, so, but this is a, a, a unique uh, episode, live stream of The Coding Train in the sense that I am going to learn something new taught by Shirley. And in fact, a little technical magic here is, can I, you, this is okay right yes. now? I, I, my stream deck is failing, so I can't seem to set up a button, but I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click something on the interface here like this. Well, boom. And that's my screen. Two different screens. So I'm gonna, should I leave it as yours right now? Sure. For like to, so that when we get to the point of you introducing yourself, you might have stuff there oh, you yeah, want to show. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, okay, welcome. Maybe you're like, what am I even watching? This is the coding train. I am your host. Is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> Dan Schiffman. Um, I try to stream. Conductor. Conductor, okay. Conductor. <laughs> I am your, can, can you, by the way, can everybody hear? Surely, okay, okay. Lots of noise from one of the two mics. I Maybe Dan's yeah. mic, since it makes noise when he moves. Somebody has a loose mic wire Wired connection. connection. Well, we can, we can test this pretty easily. Number one is um, I can put this on and I can hear, so. Should I go hello? Hello? Hello. I, it all sounds very good to me, actually. My name is Shirley. Okay. Um, I'm going to mute my mic for a second. Okay. Shirley, just talk. My name is Shirley. Uh, yeah. Okay. My name is Dan, and my mic is back on. The mic is off. The That's mic definitely is Dan's. Off. Oh, it's happening as I move around. Maybe it's just loose connection here. Okay. Let me try this. I'll probably just. Oh, that's. Yeah, I can make it happen. Okay. I think we're okay right now. It's me, and I, I think I had like a weird connection. All right. I'm going to assume for the moment. Now, one thing you should be aware of when I'm looking at the chat, um, everybody's about 30 seconds. Us. Okay. Because uh, anything we say, it takes about 30 seconds for the chat to actually see it. Got it. So sometimes the messages are very hard to. Um, oh, it's interacting with out. my hair. Yeah, I think it might have been, but I think it's. I think it's okay. I think it really was my mic because as I was listening to the headphones, mm -hmm. I shifted some wires and I heard lots of crazy stuff. Okay. So I think we're good. People are saying that my sound is low. It's really bad. On but, mine? Oh. And it's got worse. I wonder. Is it better if I stand further away? Is there some kind of receiver issue? All right, hold on. I'm going to put the, what's weird is I don't hear the glitching in the, like. Uh. Let me try to. Well, now I hear something, but that's because you're doing that. OK, so now I shouldn't get anywhere near my hair. OK. this. Sounds perfect to me. <laughs> All right, everyone, um, I'm holding up three fingers. So tell me if uh, three fingers right now, say three sounds good, sounds bad. Is it in, my, in the monitor, it sounds perfect. Huh. <laughs> because. I heard it. Oh, what is it? Is it this movement? So, take out. Let's uh, hold on a sec. We're gonna we're gonna do a little debugging of this. I'm just going to move us remove us from the picture. Okay. Um, why don't you take the whole thing off and let's just put the um, receiver on the table. It's so like un. Uh, it's gonna make some noise, everybody. Yeah, I heard it there. As I have a feeling, it's like. Um, 
Just put it here? No, no, no. Put the, take the thing out of your oh, not pocket. Okay. And then put should I just here? hold it as I speak? Well, no. Or? Put it, attach it. Okay. To the same way you had it before. But I'm going to have to move around. Yeah, I know. But uh, let's just see if we get it working. <laughs> Hello. Okay. I think maybe, so we, you, you can't see us right now, but we moved some things around. And does it sound okay? We're gonna have to wait around 20 seconds. Should I say something? Um, there we go to us. Okay, now they can see us again. Okay. <laughs> I think it's okay now. Because I'm not here. I think this. Oh. Okay. Something was happening here. Okay, okay. Yeah, it sounds good. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, so I think we're, uh, sounds all right now. I think we're okay with the sound. We're gonna just work like this, and then as soon as you have to move, oh, I'll uh, hold we'll on put to this it. back into your pocket or something. I can hold on to yeah. it, it's fine, yeah. <laughs> it should be fine, I think maybe, you, I think you could probably put it in like, you could clip it to your back pocket. It might have just been this was getting like underneath something or whatever, anyway. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it on the table. All right, back back All to right. your regularly scheduled program. Maybe we will make an edited version of this. I think this. we should have an edited version <laughs> where we just edit well, out the first 20 what, minutes. What you don't realize is this happens every time. This is not an anomaly. <laughs> I always am having like weird technical things. Okay. Um, it's because your setup is so intense. I know, I know. When I used to stream, it used to just literally by, be my computer. <laughs> and I don't think I ever had technical difficulties. <laughs> So I'm going to skip with some of the pleasantries because I want us to I want us okay. to keep track of time here. This is a special occasion uh, with Shirley here. I'm going to so what's happening? First of all, thank you to Linode, our sponsor. Do you have websites you host on the internet? Yes. Yeah. So if you like Shirley has websites you host on the internet, Linode is a cloud server that you could use. And, and about halfway through the live stream, I'll come back and tell you a little about Linode and and um, how you can get a coupon through the coding train. Really, just by going to linode.com/codingtrain. But um, what we're going to do today is I, most of my tutorials, most of the videos that I do, involve a JavaScript library called P5. Mm -hmm. Do you know P5? Yes. <laughs> Shirley is an amazing superstar data artist. Um, <laughs> if you're not familiar with her work, you should definitely check out her website, which I think you have uh, up here right now. I can pull up um, my website. I, will, yeah. um, uh, I think it's actually in this video description's link and some of the um, moderators um, could um, uh, maybe post it in the YouTube chat, a uh, link to Shirley's website. Ooh, okay. um, yeah, don't, don't, don't worry so much. We'll, we'll figure this out. <laughs> oh, and um, actually, uh, what I'm going to do here, I forgot one little technical piece that I'm going to add. I'm actually going to record all of the separate outputs. I'm not recording your laptop screen, I just realized. Ooh. That's fine. Um, we're just going to cook this. Open last. Um, Multi-quarter. Uh, okay, I'm gonna fix that in a little bit. Um, so, um, and Shirley uses a variety of different tools. I'm imagining for your work, but yeah. one of the tools you use the quite frequently is biggest one is D3. D3. So uh, D3 is a JavaScript library. It also has a letter and number, yes. but it's pretty different. So, and I, 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 I want to say that I've never used D3, but that's not entirely true. Okay. I, I think I've tried to use it once or twice. Okay. Um, but I couldn't remember what I did the last time I used it. Uh -huh. And so what this is going to be, uh, this is so much similar to when MPJ was here. And mm -hmm. MPJ showed me a little bit about React. Mm -hmm. Shirley's going to teach me how to use D3. And we're going to make, uh, she's got a little workshop planned. I'm the student. Shirley is the teacher. And I'm going to attempt to code over here on my laptop, which one will kind of switch back and forth. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe what we could do to get started with is if, Shirley, if you want to take a minute to introduce yourself, I kind of did a little bit, <laughs> but if there's anything I missed that you want to say about your work or things you do or other things you want to plug, um, you could do that. And I'm going to just add one more technical feature, which is I want to be recording to disk your laptop screen. Okay. Because if we decide to make like an edited version of this that gets published as like a standalone D3 tutorial without mm -hmm. a lot of the extra nonsense of figuring out mic stuff, mm -hmm. um, I work with a video editor and he puts all the stuff together. But if we're not recording this, we won't yeah. have it. Oh, you know what we could do though? Much simpler solution. Just um, I'm just going to do a screen time? capture. Yeah. I mean, I could set it up, but this is going to be much uh, quicker. So I'm just going to do a new screen recording. Mm -hmm. um, and 
Uh, I'm gonna I think you could just do the whole screen. Yeah, I, but I wanted to just see if it has sound, but it doesn't matter. It's like an extra. I'm just going to do this. And now oh, it wait, is. Wait. It's recording. All right, that's Perfect. a much simpler solution. And I won't worry about I have this other setup that records all the video signals. I don't think I focused the camera. Stay there. Stand there. <laughs> You know, we had this last minute add a second laptop. Yeah, that was my fault. I was like... <laughs> I was all set up and ready to go. And then I was like, damn, maybe it's good to have a second laptop. So I'm just going to... Uh, if you could just stand still for a second. Oh, okay, still. I'm going to focus the camera. Uh, and there we go. That's better. Great. Um, okay. So I think we're good uh, technology-wise. <laughs> we have your laptop. If I want to switch to my laptop, I need to use this mouse. I'm just going to get it ready, and I just click this button back to my laptop. Okay. So that's how I'm going to do it, and I'm going to leave it at yours mm -hmm. and say, take it away. <laughs> tell me what you, tell. hi, your name is Shirley. <laughs> yes, how about I just read this? Okay. Hi, my name is Shirley. <laughs> I'm, I'm an independent. You can talk to the camera. Oh, that's right. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, uh, hi, my name is Shirley. Um, uh, my title that I've given myself is independent creator of data visualizations. Um, and that doesn't really mean anything. I'm, I'm just a freelancer and I, I work with uh, clients um, around the world, mostly on um, like tech companies, media companies, journalism companies, and I work with them and their data to tell visual stories. Um, and so some of the things I've done before is um, this one. So this one is, this is really funny because the first time we <laughs> met, um, we were like doing, it was, uh, we met because um, we did a thing with MPJ and yes. Michael. Yes. And then we were like 40 minutes into like a live stream or like a recording. Um, and then I started showing this project, and Dan was like, wait, I know this project. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I spent a lot of time poking through this project. Did you really? Yeah, oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> I'm a musical theater geek, nerd fan. Ah. I've seen Hamilton a bunch of times. How many times? Twice. <laughs> That's more. <laughs> I have tickets to see Evita this weekend. I'm very excited. I've seen it three times. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah. So that's one of the projects that did really well. I've also worked with The Guardian on something a lot more serious about homelessness. So I just, um, yeah, my job is I try to take data sets that, you know, maybe when it's just numbers, um, it, it might seem cold or hard to understand and try to convey them in a way that's compelling and maybe even emotional. Mm -hmm. um, and for today, what we want to do is I had this project and I just realized this is the first project I ever published after I went freelance. So that was three and a half years ago. Um, and it's this visualization of the top summer blockbusters since I've been alive. Uh -huh. um, and each of these flowers represent a movie and um, each of the petals are parental guidance ratings, um, colors are genres, um, and then the number of petals and the size of the petals correspond with like IMDB data. So for example, like this is um, IMDB data out of 10 is right. the size. Um, and so, you know, there's like some of them that are like, you know, Dark Knight Rises, really big, yeah. beautiful, um, love Harry Potter, Inception. Um, the one that I love showing is 1997, Batman and Robin. And how cute, it's so tiny, tiny. cute. <laughs> but today we're gonna recreate this. Okay. Um, These, by the way, are very, have a visual quality very similar to some of the coding challenges I've done with polar roses. So ah. if you use polar coordinates to kind of loop around the path of a circle, but adjust the angle and the radius as you're moving and you loop around, you can get these rose-like patterns. Yeah. So I have this, uh, most recently, I think I did a video around the Mora rose, which is a particular way of doing this. Anyway, just had to link that together. Yeah, um, okay. so that's what we're doing today. Okay. Um, and we talked about this and I was like, I'm gonna go into this having prepped absolutely nothing. It's yes. been about, it's That been is how wild. it works here, no prep. <laughs> <laughs> no prep. And so it's just going to be pure, like, we're just going to be thinking through this together. Okay, great. Yeah. So do you want to get started, or do you want to do anything else before No, this we get is good. Started? Let's get started. Okay. Because we, uh, we we're on a, a time crunch here. Yes. Okay. So let's switch back to your okay. laptop So then. I'm going to, unfortunately, I couldn't get my Stream Deck button to work, so I have to do this manually. But now I'm here. And I need to go to um, a web browser. Now, I usually use 
the P5 web editor, mm -hmm. which um, uh, uh, you know most people who have watched the channel have seen, which looks like this. I can type JavaScript code here. If I run this run this sketch, I see the canvas output here. But um, <laughs> Amazing, amazing invisible uh, cup there. <laughs> um, but uh, we're going to use a different web editor mm -hmm. today. Yeah, it's so called Observable. Um, ObservableHQ.com, I think. I'm just going to um, Google it. and uh, I don't know nope. if that's going to be a good. <laughs> <laughs> um, there we go. Yeah. So this is uh, uh, kind of the newest iteration mm -hmm. of um, the creator of D3 right. um, is also behind this. And it's kind of like, I think of it as um, Jupyter Notebook, but right. on the web um, and kind of tailored for data visualization. Right. So, uh, you know, a lot of people in the audience are probably familiar with Jupyter Notebooks because it's a thing that's out there that a lot of a tool that you use, but it's not something that I use regularly on this Me channel. Me neither. So, Jupyter Notebook is a, um, a a page essentially that you can run in a web browser, type in Python code, mm -hmm. and execute it. And what's special about it is you can execute like. What I think are called cells, like yeah. little blocks one There's at a cells time. For these and two. so that's what we're seeing here. But the difference is um, we can do that, uh, these like little cells, we're going to do that with JavaScript. Yeah. Okay. So how do I get started? Do I need to create an account? You can just like, yeah, sign in. Let's sign see if I do sign in with, with GitHub. Let's try that. All right. I'm going to authorize it. <laughs> here we go, everybody. And then um, okay, so now this is, this is this is definitely the first time I've used Observable myself. I've looked at a lot of Observable notebooks. I have a kind of memory that it's got its a little bit of its own way of doing things that's different from maybe a traditional JavaScript workflow. Is that true? Or yeah, so I only really recommend this for prototyping. Okay. Um, obviously, like if you want to then make a website or something, you would go and like do an index HTML or something. Um, but I think for this, it would be fun to, so you want to be editing in these cells. So where it right. says MD. But I can call this, oh, oh, no, no, no. I see. Yeah. So then you can. Nice. Okay. And then oh, what and you then can I do, hit run? Shift, no, shift return Ooh. is the shortcut. <laughs> ah, all right. Okay. Yeah. Um, People tell me this is this is a little bit smaller than the font size I usually use, but I can also zoom into it. Or you can um, and zoom I can, in. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I'll do this. That's good. Okay. And I'm giving us this much. It's always confusing. This much space so that we don't stand in front of it. Yes. So I think we're good. Okay. okay. All right. So I think the very first thing um, that we can do is just create one of the petal shapes. Um, okay. And so this is where I kind of wanted to talk through SVG paths together with you. Okay. Um, and. Um, maybe the way we can do this is first we draw it on the board, okay. and then we put it in okay. here. Okay. Okay. Um, and so. So I'm going to switch the camera to the whiteboard. Yes. And you're just going to have to take that. Oh, with that's you. right. Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you have a marker. And yes. I'm just going to stand over here. I like how everything is set up for Dan, so it's like everything. Ooh, ooh, and I'm gonna plug. This is um, this is a new sweater. Um, it is designed by Georgia Lupi, who is an amazing data artist and designer. Um, and this sweater is a data visualization of Ada Lovelace and her algorithm for the Babbage engine. Yeah. Amazing. So uh, please don't ask me how to read it because I <laughs> haven't decoded it yet. Um, but I was just really excited to like wear this <laughs> on your live code. Um, yeah, okay, so let's do SVG paths together. So Dan, I know you work a lot in P5, so I'm, I'm guessing stand over here. Um, I'm guessing that you're extremely familiar with like canvas, like, okay, I'm gonna put it in here and I hope I'm gonna put it in another pocket yeah. and I People hope let it's me fine. know if, the, if if audio ever goes crazy, we've got the mic in Shirley's pocket again. Yes, a different pocket. <laughs> different pocket. A different it looks pocket. good to me. Okay, so I'm gonna we're, we're gonna see. So um, I know you use a lot of canvas and you make yeah. a lot of shapes in canvas. Yes. Um, but for SVG today, I want to just talk about like SVG paths. There's like so much room up there that I, I can't know. reach. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, and so what that looks like is, actually, should I start from SVG and what SVG is? Yeah, sure. So um, you probably cover a lot of Canvas. Oh, my writing is so small. It's OK. It, it flow, it's much bigger. People can ah, see it. Okay, Write okay. a little bit bigger, I would say. I will, But okay. it's, it's, this is a tiny little monitor. So OK, that's don't, fair. That's not what people are seeing. Um, so with Canvas. <laughs> Write bigger, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, 
So with Canvas, um, it is one DOM element, um, and the way you draw to it is that you literally, it's literally drawing pixels right. on the canvas, and you will say like, draw circle, or like fill rect, or f like you have dot arc, or something like that, um, and it's just drawing um, and filling pixels. Um, and with SVG, SVG elements are actually DOM elements. So for each individual SVG element, like if we want to draw a circle, it's a circle element. If we want to draw a rectangle, it's a rectangle element, um, and so on and so forth. So um, the way I like to think about it is Canvas is kind of like Photoshop, um, and SVG is like Illustrator. So um, today, I just want to cover SVG paths because I think SVG paths are extremely powerful. And if you just master it, you can like create any shapes that you want. So for those flowers, we're going to SV use SVG path to create individual petals. Right. Um, and so yeah. one, one point of reference mm -hmm. for this is when I've done things in processing, mm -hmm. um, it's also bitmapped images, but processing has a PDF renderer where I can save out the stuff I'm drawing as a vector information. Oh, I didn't know so that. So that's one thing that I've done from time to time, and then you can blow something up much higher resolution. And oh. SVG stands for Scalable, Scalable Vector, vector graphics. graphics. Yeah. All right. And Illustrator, <laughs> if you draw in Illustrator, and yeah. if you're super familiar with Illustrator, that exports to SVG too. Right. And vice versa, you can import SVG into Illustrator. Right. Um, and so the for path, SVG path looks, at the base, it looks like this. Oh, wait, no, no, sorry. I. It looks like path, and you want to, the one thing you need is this attribute called D, and this is where you put in your path string. And what I mean by a path string is that there's a series of commands that you can use, and today I just want to talk about M, L, and C, and they stand for move to, Line two. By the way, your handwriting is so much better than mine. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Curve two. Oh, you know, one of the things I was like kind of excited but kind of like apprehensive about is like your level of energy on in your <laughs> videos is like so intense. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to like be able to match it. But at the same time, that might be too much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like to, for like both of us to be yes. at that level. It's OK. Um, so yeah, so they stand for move to line to curve two. Um, and so move to is um, probably the most straightforward, which is... Um, it's like translate in P5, I would assume. Translate um, is moving from one point to another via a difference in X and a difference in Y. Oh, or you're moving to a direct location. Yeah, yeah so okay. move That's to... a little bit different. The way that I think about it is move to is like if you take a pen or pencil and you drop that pen or pencil onto the XY point. Right. That's how I think of move to. Uh, Line two is then uh, draw a line from there to the next to where you're for, for where you move to to then to the next x y. Yes, exactly. So um, the way I think about L line two is that it just says if when when your when your um, if your uh, pen is on the paper, draw a straight line to that point. Got it. Um, and. That means that um, L always needs to be chained with something before it because um, like you can't draw a line if your pen isn't on the paper yet. So you mm -hmm. always need to start your path string with an M, and then you can ch chain like M, L, L, M, whatever you want. Yeah, OK, um, got it. And then curve two is, I think, the funnest one. It has <laughs> a little bit of a tricky like um, uh, syntax. But once I explain it, it will make a lot of sense. And I just realized I need multiple different colors. Oh, wait. And that's, is that something <laughs> we have? Oh, yeah. And I, might I have forgot to leave about this. this. Room I forgot, I'm sorry, color. I forgot about this. Um, I don't. I'm going to try my best with just these colors. <laughs> you could colors. do like a dotted line. I need like three, four different colors. <laughs> so it's not, we'll see. Okay, okay. we'll see. Um, okay. So, the <laughs> all right, this is my. Uh, Okay, so uh, I'm going to call it PX1, PX2, and, and oh, these, sorry, are the PY. these are the control points. Yeah, so yeah, I get so, into it. You know, again, people might not be familiar with, with this, but if they're a P5 user, mm -hmm. this sounds like it's just like the Bezier curve function. 
uh, where you have two endpoints and two control points. Exactly. So this Great. is exactly yeah. the so same thing. So this maps to that idea. Yeah. So this is basically, um, yeah. So if you in Canvas, is exactly the same thing. Um, and so let me explain the syntax really in. And there's a really nice reference. While you're writing this out, there's a really nice reference in Rune Matson's Programming Design Systems book which has a whole page about what a Bezier curve is and has some interactive ways of playing with it. I'll show it to you later if you okay. haven't seen it. It's fantastic. Um, so then um, this is just like you said, control point one, control point two, and end point. Right. And so let's say, for example, we have you know a string, a path string that says M00. And then let's say we say C. Um, OK, let's start drawing it. So this is. Perfect. Yeah, yep. Zero, zero. So this is the M. So this is why I like to use different colors. So it's like really visually clear what mm -hmm. each one of them is. And I like to think of it as like, let's say I'm going to end up at 100, comma, zero. And so we have zero, zero. And I think of it as I'm drawing, I'm going to draw a straight line to 100, zero. And then um, I have these kind of like implicit anchor points um, that then I can take and kind of like put it, like drag it wherever, wherever I want. And let's say I want to drag the anchor point to here, and that's roughly, I would say maybe 2020. Maybe that's the mm -hmm. anchor point is 2020. And then this anchor point maybe is 8020. And so I'll write that in 2020, 20, 80, 20. And this path string will give me this curve. Right. So basically exactly how it, it's it's called it's this curve too is a Bezier, Bezier curve too. And um so if if anyone works with Illustrator, that's basically in Illustrator how you draw a curve is you start from a starting point, you like make a line to your ending point, and then you get two anchor points that you can drag around. Yeah, so here's a really nice reference. I'll just switch over to it for a second. This is a reference here that's showing how Bezier curves are calculated. And I think if I go down <laughs> somewhere here, I, uh -huh. I seem to remember this nice way of interacting with this. Yeah, so I Maybe think this here. one. Oh, yeah, this, ooh, oh, this is a little bit different. but. Um, so I think this one is a cubic, cubic. Ah, okay. curve. Oh, yeah. Sorry, this is a quadratic. Actually, this one. Yeah, yeah. So that one is a quadratic Bezier curve, curve and, and this one is a cubic. The cubic. And, and we're doing cubic here. So yeah. And the reason why I like teaching the cubic Bezier curve is because I think it gives much more options than the quadratic one. Right. Um, and so yeah. So this is how to do an SVG path. Um, and so what I like to do here now is then ask you to draw a petal shape uh -oh. or design a petal shape <laughs> and then kind of like figure out approximately where um, the points are and write this path string. So design it here on the whiteboard, not just tinker around. Yeah, design it, it here first, first? Okay. because I think it gives you like a... Okay, so maybe I'll use up here. I can reach oh my a little God, higher. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, so in other words, a single petal. So if I think yes. about a flower... Like a single petal might look like this. Yeah. And you can, I, I just went a little bit too high, but so I'll, I'll, I'll cut it off a little lower. <laughs> and, and you can, can get creative. Um, well, well, I'm we'll afraid. start with that. We'll okay. start with that. So I could use two different curves. Yes. So I would start here uh -huh. and curve like up to here. Yes. And then I would still be here and curve back down to here. Yes. So I would do a first and move. So I first need to get to this point. Can I just yes. consider that point zero, zero? Sure. So I would do M, mm -hmm. zero, zero. Yes. And then I need uh, uh, two control points. Oh, no, no, the M is just moved. Now I need curve two. And yes. curve two, I need three pairs of X, Ys. Yes, uh, the first two being the control points. Right. So and I'm, mm -hmm. how is in P5, mm -hmm. if I'm in a P5 canvas, uh -huh. the Cartesian plane is such that 0, 0 is in the top left, and yes. X goes this way and Y goes this yes. way. Is, am I going positive in SVG when no, I go up? No, it's exactly the exactly same. Exactly the same. Yeah. 
So I would be, if I want my first control point to be like over here. Yeah. It would be negative pixels. Yes. Negative pixels. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> if I say like negative 10, negative 10. Yeah, sure. And then I might want to go up here. Mm -hmm. And this again, this is not as creative as maybe I could be or oh, yeah, wacky. But then I could say negative 10, because I'm still the same X, but I'm gonna go further up. So I'm gonna say like negative 40. Do you want do you want uh, to erase that? Yes, part? I guess so. I was afraid to erase. Um, so then I'm gonna say negative 10, negative 40, <laughs> and then uh, the last would be the anchor point, uh, which uh, no, the fin that's the, the last point. The last point. So, yeah. So those those these two are those are anchor, anchor points. points. Could, I think of them as control points. Or control reason. points. Control yeah. points are. And I think too. of this as an anchor, but I don't think ah. that's not the right terminology. You know, know what? I think we're just making up yeah. terminology. Mm, um, yeah. Uh, somebody in the chat is already telling us exactly what the terminology is supposed to be. <laughs> uh, and then, except not for 30 seconds. Um, <laughs> and so then this last point, I want it to be back to zero yes. um, and negative 50. Perfect. So I just considered this to be like a height of 50 pixels. Yes. And then I can curve right back to down to here. Yes. So this will be easier because I'm just going to now go over. 10 mm -hmm. and then down to negative 40 then over 10 and down to negative 10 and then back to zero zero yes perfect so this is my code that i need to type into here yeah. inside the observable notebook yes um do you want to just draw the two uh, oh, control yeah, so points on the other yeah. side i mean this is not drawn to scale <laughs> that's fine <laughs> um okay so okay. now that we have this um, let's go back to, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go back to, I'm going to put yeah, this marker here, mm -hmm. the good one, and then I'm going to go back to here, mm -hmm. and then do I make a new cell okay, for this? Create a new cell. And, I and I'm, am I not using D3 right now? I'm just writing SVG stuff so directly? Um, no, so this one right now is just a cell. So okay. um, what we can do here is l let's declare a variable, and we're just, it's going to be global to this notebook, and okay. so let's just call this like, Pedal. Do I use let? No. So it's global. So, oh, so, so you just, can think of it as so like. Just, just don't even declare. Just, just the variable name. Pedal. Yeah. Okay. Or pedal shape or whatever you want to call pedal path, whatever you want to call it. Um, usually uh, you can either do it as a string or. Yeah, I think like string this? might make sense. Uh, just the path string that oh. you. Yeah. Like this. No, 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 no. Just the, just the. Oh, just the. Just oh, the I M. see. Yeah, the yeah, thing yeah. that's going. I'm usually like very good with my buttons. The thing that's going right in here. Yes. Yes. Got perfect. It. Okay. So, um, so I could say, uh, m zero comma zero mm -hmm. control. Uh, <laughs> I have to look at it. <laughs> Much easier than. Trevor. Negative ten. Negative uh, forty. Zero, negative. And then just no no comma, no space, no delimiter, just go you, right to the next can, C? You can put in, I think. Um, uh, so like this would be, that you can, can do, do that. that. Um, so you can also between each of, I like to, so oh wait, no comma after the C. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no yeah, comma yeah. after the C. And then I like to put a oh, space like between here and then no comma here. No comma, yeah. Got it. Because oh. that is easier to read for myself. Got it. And, and so, and like even like this, could I do? Or that's bad. Uh, no, you can do like <laughs> the so SVG will like um, read that fine. It's very easy going about this. Yeah, so it's just easier for me to read it, um, and then close the string, and then if you run the. Does this look right? I think it looks right. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. You can also see it there if that's easier for oh, you. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna run it. Yes. Oh. Perfect. It just showed it to me again. Yes, so that's because just, that's, that's showing me like what's in the me in memory right now. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's make another new cell, okay. and then let's just draw this. So I think we should just be able to say HTML, and then backtick. So kind of like how we do the MD. Oh. Um, like this is actually like I'm gonna put some HTML on the page. Yeah, I think that. that's how we can do it. I've never tried okay. to do this. Um, and then and then you can close that. Uh, close the back tick, I mean. Uh, but now I need to go in. Yes. Put and stuff in I there. I think you can just do SVG in there. I might be really wrong. Uh, uh, and then you can write H HTML in there, yeah, and do uh, like SVG. And then Let's I do path. Yeah. And then you should D be. D equals pedal path, like this? Yeah, I think. 
I could be completely wrong, but this let's give how, it a try. Like that? Yeah, I think so. Let's see. If so I'm works. using this particular syntax because this is that new fancy way in Java. Yeah. It's not that new <laughs> for me as of, of like including a variable yes. expression, in, and so it's the same here. Okay. Let's yeah. Try. Let's see if it. Oh yes. Um, okay. So. Um, let's go inspect element and see if it drew the path or Wait, not. Like inspect this? Yeah. It's just a DOM mm -hmm. element. Yeah, so then if we open it up, maybe we can make it bigger for people. Ooh, perfect. So, Whoops. but oddly enough. But I don't see anything. Do I, not, do I need to specify a color or something like that? So, oh, you know why? Or because. Why is this M? It looks like the quotes are in the wrong uh, because place. Because I think you need to but go back and put quotes around the pedal oh, path. Oh, right. But there's another reason why it's not showing up, and we'll talk about that after you do so the quotes. So this, like this. Yeah, and then run again. And there's going to be the next reason why it's not showing up is because, and I'll do, wait, hold on. Ooh, ooh, OK, let yeah. me try this. OK, so this is the 0, zero of SVG. And you are drawing a pedal. Oh, oh, oh. You are drawing a pedal up here, uh, so you're not gonna see it. So I need to start, um, like well, from over here. So what we can do with SVG is SVG also uh, has something called transform. Transform. That's attributes. what translate. Yeah. So we can after the D, let's put in like a transform. Like here. Oh no 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 no. Uh, like in a like a different as a different attribute. Oh, you mean like this? Yeah is equal to, quote, translate. I have a keyboard issue. I'm, gonna, I'm, getting, I'm getting one of those new Mac laptops <laughs> that they fix this butterfly keyboard is a disaster. I'm giving this. Anyway, that's, that's OK. A, sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, unrelated topic. But <laughs> I like seriously, this keyboard is making me so crazy. OK, translate. This is why I never upgraded And then that like, uh, you, and you made a good decision, and I made a bad decision. Uh, like and you, you still want to translate down. Oh. Because because you're translating basically oh. you're you're translating over. Oh, yeah, I mean yeah. it's. Uh, well, you you well the Y you still want to translate it down. Oh, there it is. Oh, there's my pedal. <laughs> yes. Oh wow, that's so satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so interesting. Do you, do, do you want a few mi moments? No, no, that's good. <laughs> right. Um, and I'm just gonna say um. Just keep moving it around. Yeah. Do you want to go crazy? I mean, no, no, no. I, this is good. Yeah, this is, yeah. I'm, I'm going to leave it like that. And the there's there's other attributes like fill and stroke that would set the all that. So yeah. similar to how you draw in Canvas, it's but they're a SVG attributes. Yeah, so it's essentially a lot of the same functionality as Canvas. Mm -hmm. It will translate over really easily. They just, the interface is Got different. It. OK. Um, and so another thing I'm just going to say right now, this. This is okay right now, but I like to set the width and height of the SVG as attributes, or the uh. I, width and height attributes, because one of the co most common mistakes that people will uh, um, have when they first start with SVG is you can think of SVG as kind of like a window into the SVG world. Right. So there's like things being rendered here, and you're just getting a little viewport. Yeah. And if your viewport is too small, and like you know you render your data like down here, right. you won't ever see it. And I've seen so many frustrated people. Um, so if you do Ooh. that, it will be cut off. Right. Because now you're. I, but. Oh, no, no, 25. <laughs> math, math is hard. Yay! Yay! So <laughs> what we can do is we can uh, like set another variable and um, just say that the size is 50, that like the size of the pedal is 50. And now you can go around, like for, for later, we can use that as a variable. You mean set a variable up here? Uh, so you can't do, well, you can't do multiple variables in a cell. You have to have, uh, you have to do a new cell? new cell for the variable. And then I would do like pedal size? Yeah is 50. Yeah, and then you and can then, you, and then you can use that later to like programmatically. Oh, but I would want that to be in here, right? No. No. Oh, cuz I would do that use a transform to like scale it. Oh, for this. Like oh. for like or if you yeah, for the translate later but, on. But these are hard the 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 path values are hard coded. Mm -hmm, that's fine. So if I wanted to suddenly make it bigger. You would use a transform scale. Transform scale. OK, yeah. got it. So we'll get there. OK, got it. OK, so the next thing we want to do, now that we have a pedal, is. And this um, is saving automatically? Yeah, okay. ma automatically. <laughs> okay. um, so if you want to go to, or I can show it here. OK. Um, 
so here you might notice um, we have the petals. Oh, and then I can I can really quickly run through these. Like so, this one, you know, I drew the G. I drew like a like a curve down to the bottom. Yeah. And then um, I think I have maybe another. Oh yeah, I drew a curve down to the bottom, but I like that anchor point. I like right. did at the same line as like the bottom one, and then I drew another curve. The PG I drew three curves. The PG thirteen was fun because that yeah. was one curve, one line, one line, one curve. Yeah. Um. So like once you know these right. paths, you right. can decode right. how these. Yeah. Like shapes yeah. are made. My thing is usually I just do the, the simplest basic version without a lot of flair, and the audience you'll, will, will be amazed what they can make. <laughs> so uh, take Shirley's work as inspiration for how you might design your pedal if you happen to be following along. Um, but I'm very happy with mine. Yeah. So uh, the next thing we want to do, so this is where we're actually going to get into D3. Okay. Um, and one of the things that oh, D3. Oh, we're still on your laptop. Sorry. Oh, no. I, 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 I want to explain some things. Yeah. Um, so, uh, D3 is this sort of big library that has a lot of functionality, um, but what's it, what it's really good for is translating raw data into what you need for the browser to render. So, um, today, I, I'm just going to, well, so there's a lot of, like, things that it makes easy for us, like calculating positions of, um, like node and link graphs, mm -hmm. and um, you know, giving us different like x y positions for oh, not this one. Oh, yeah, yes, that one. Um, I'm sorry for like drawing trees. So like, it will calculate x y positions and like SVG paths for all of that. Um. But today what we want to do is use something called scales, D3 scales. Um, and this is something I use in basically like uh -huh. every one of my projects. Um, and so what scales does is um, essentially translate one thing, one thing into another. I think maybe in P5 you have like dot map, I think. It, map is a function that will take a value with a given range. And re and map it to a new range. Yeah. 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 Exactly. That's okay. what scales do Scale. for D three. So it. like just different vocabulary. Right, right. Yes. Um, and so for example, we have like linear scales that do right. like you know linear leaf. And the, and the map function just does it as like a linear scale. Okay. So there's not a way. There's obviously other ways you can think of a range and map the value. But so it sounds like D three has a lot of yeah capabilities in terms of how you. Um, Different kinds of scales, like logarithmic scale and that type of thing. Yeah, so we have yeah. like power, log, time. Like you can yeah. like oh, cool. map as input. Like if you have like a date, like a JavaScript yeah. date object, right. because a lot of times in data you have like dates and years, right. and you want to like map that to like the x position. Um, you will use scale time. Um, one of my personal favorites is quantize, like which is basically um, you give it a continuous input. And then you give it a discrete output, and when you, um, and then when you pass in your numbers, it will map to. Ah. So like, it's like a, it's, it's, this is very much like the machine learning examples I've been doing. Like ah. take an input and map to a classification, but in this case, you don't need machine learning because it's just really the literal range. Yeah. Divided up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so the reason why I'm talking about this is because now I want us to do some mapping from the data um, to each of these kind of attributes. So I think what we want to do is uh, let's do a mapping for the number of petals. Okay. And so you can imagine it's from the number of INDB votes to the number of um, petals. And so that's the scale quantized from earlier because it's a continuous num uh, continuous input, mm -hmm. but then you, you you can't have like you know 5.5 .5 petals, right? Like you want five petals or six, six petals or seven. So it. I have like five to I think nine or ten maybe. Okay. Um, and then we'll use a scale linear to do um, from the IMDb rating to. The size, the size to the scale. Like so the we're going to just work with number of petals and size of the flower. Yeah. 
Perfect. Those two things. Um, so let's actually just get into the observable. Um, and I just realized um, that maybe I also want to give you the data. Oh, OK. <laughs> so should I switch to my laptop? We're still on yours. Uh, it's a nice let's picture of your GitHub. <laughs> Thank you. Um, wait, let me let me uh, let me pull up the data first. So the data should okay. be on my film flowers, maybe. So under film flowers, I have movies.json. Okay, great. Um, so I can should I pull that up here? Yeah, actually, that might be the okay. easier thing to do. So and let me then switch to here. Now we're back to m the this laptop, and I'm going to GitHub.com/slash. What's your? Uh, S X Y W U. Okay, same. Uh, and then, um, and then you can do slash. You're not following. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. If I don't know. Do people follow people on GitHub? Is that I a thing? I don't either. I don't think I follow you I don't, on GitHub. Either. I'm not. Fo I don't <laughs> notice that there's like a follow. I don't ever follow <laughs> on GitHub. But yeah, you're That's probably the flowers. only person now that I follow on GitHub. Uh, film, slash film flowers. Film. Yeah. So. Also, it seems like we're about to get the data, which is kind of like a new stage. So mm. we could take like, I often like to take a break in the middle just for a couple minutes. Okay. So maybe now is a good time to do that as, as I get the data. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so movies.json. So, movies .json. so do I need to, um, how, are, how is this going to come into observable? Because okay. I also could take a break and let people uh, do that. Okay, so there's two ways. Um, so let me let me just let's Click get to the yeah raw so that we can get to the actual URL. Okay. There's two ways. Um, if you want to copy that, um, and then I'm going to show you the first way because I think it's the closest to how we actually will develop. Okay, great. And so like we're going to we're going to get the data into Observable, and then yeah. everyone who's watching, if you're following along. Uh, hopefully, you have your own pedal design or an exact replica of my mm -hmm. pedal design, and then the data into Observable. And we'll take a short break to make sure everybody has that, answer any questions, and come back and finish the project. Awesome. Okay. Okay. So, um, what we want to do is two steps. Um, first, let's go down here, make a new cell, and say D3 is equal to require D3. Oh, so you can use require in an yeah. Observable notebook. And do I put that in quotes, yeah? Yeah. So, this is interesting because. Uh, if with a P5 web editor, mm -hmm. that it works with just referencing other JavaScript libraries through a script tag in the HTML mm. page. Whereas if you're working in Node, or if you're even using the f JavaScript modules, which is a thing that I don't really know about, <laughs> someday I'll learn that. Um, you can say there's like the import syntax too. Yeah. But the require I use commonly. Uh, and have used in video tutorials when I'm working with Node.js. Mm -hmm. So if I want to use a JavaScript package in Node, I'll require it. And so I guess somehow D3 underneath the hood underneath is the taking hood care of will it take for care us. of that. So this is and, and and this makes sense in the sort of like notebook style because in Python you would just say like import NumPy or whatever. Yeah. So this is the equivalent of that. Yeah. Okay. So I would then I would run this. Yes. Kay. And then you get that. Oh, um, and look, I can like debug right here. Like I have a little mini JavaScript code. I have yeah. the entire D3 library specification yes. right here in an object. Well, How convenient. Uh, yes. Okay. And um, then do I need a new cell? Yes, please. And then you can say data is equal to. Does <laughs> keyboard? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a new computer. I'm getting a new computer just for the keyboard. If you can believe that. Wait, are you gonna insane. get a new computer that's the old Mac? No, they they just released. I, this is not a sponsor. Although Apple, if you want to send me a laptop, I'll I'll take it. <laughs> but um, um, the new 16-inch Pro, they've redesigned the keyboard. Oh, I didn't and know. And the that. reviews I've read online seem to say like it's a much nicer keyboard, and okay. it actually has an escape button. You can oh, press you don't the have escape, an escape button. button. No, it's oh. ridiculous. Okay. I mean, I, there is a thing called an external keyboard. I have, I do use that often when I'm sitting at my desk. I'll just use an external keyboard. Okay. But it's too much stuff in here. Back to our schedule program. Equal Data <laughs> equals yes. D three dot JSON. So that's like loading a JSON, JSON file, and I can put a URL in there. Yes. And, and then I can just do this. Just load. Perfect. And then can I can I look at what's in there? Yeah, you can you can open it up. Oh, it's there. Yeah. <gasps> Isn't it awesome? That is so cool. So what I love about this, I just sort of like <laughs> I get very excited and sometimes like I have a little bit of an issue. But um, nobody can see that. It doesn't show up but on now, the feed. Now I'm here, so like you have yeah, to it's very embarrassing. <laughs> um, so um, what I love about this is um, 
having the sort of like console debugging built right in, which I yeah. imagine when you're working with data yeah. in a step-by-step -step process is super useful. Okay, so uh, we're going to take just like, uh, we're not going to, uh, sometimes I take a five minute break, a very short break, but um, uh, because I also <laughs> am very excited to tell you about some new things I learned about uh, the sponsor of the coding train, uh, Linode, uh, recently. So let me just pull this up over here. So, okay, so we're making a project in D3 in Observable, but you said you just use Observable for prototyping. I only do so it for prototyping. So at some point, you would finish the project and you'd need to put it somewhere. And there's yeah. a variety of different ways you can host a website and people watching this know how to do that. But one way is using a virtual server. So Linode provides virtual servers that make it easy and affordable to host your own app, site, project, or anything else you might uh, you may uh, want, want to live on the internet. So a lot of things in my tutorials I make node applications, um, this the machine learning stuff. The Twitter bot is kind of like the obvious one where you have to deploy that to a server somewhere. Um, and all of these kind of projects you can use with a uh, Linode server. They also have the like one click thing, which is very convenient, you know, because if you want to like install WordPress, for example, if you've ever tried to install WordPress with like a console, it's crazy. You just go, you log on, you click it, you have WordPress installed. Huh. Um, you have game servers, they have 24 7 customer support, um, but what I'm excited to tell you about, which I, I'm yet to experiment with, but I'm planning to, is they also have GPU instances. So I have some tutorials around training a machine learning model, in particular using TensorFlow um, to train this thing called a car RNN model, which is like a text generator. So if you have like your favorite poet, do you have a favorite poet? I'm like putting you on the spot. Yeah. No, I, I don't have one <laughs> I'm not, either. I'm not I was much like, of a <laughs> poem person. Yeah. <laughs> so, but if you if you had some text that you're excited to like feed into a machine learning system, I have a tutorial which um, which shows you how to do that on uh, a server. And so, what you, but you what you need is a GPU. And so, Linode has GPU instances. They have a Quadro RTX 6000 which is like a very exciting sounding name for a <laughs> GPU. Um, so you can do machine learning, ray tracing, and other AI. So if you're interested in trying Linode, um, all you need to do is uh, look at the link in the description of this video, to, which will take you right to linode.com slash coding train. But also you can just use the coupon coding train 20. That's one word, coding train 20, because you'll get $20 in free credit which you can use to deploy your site. So I'll, I'm going uh, 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 to look back through all my video tutorials and see what kind of like websites I've made and server <laughs> applications and think about which of those I can try on um, Linode. Um, OK, so um, some, sometimes what I'll do is just also give ourselves a minute here, um, just in case any, I often need a break. In fact, I sort of like we could just keep going. But I'm going to, um, so but uh, let me come back to the screen here. And so there's two things you can do now while we're taking a break. One is sign up for Linode. <laughs> um, that helps support the work that I do here on the coding train, lets them know that you found out about it from me, um, as well as make sure you've got your um, code set up here. So I'm going to just mute us for a second. Oh, yes. I want to just say, um, I there's a... There's a hi from Alice, Amy, Catherine, Cam, and Mochi. That's my studio office in SF. Hi. Thank <laughs> oh, you for awesome. tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I'm just going to like uh, make sure we we uh, we're all set for the next stage. I'm gonna we're, I'm gonna like take a minute also to look at the chat. So if you're struggling to follow along, ask a question um, in the chat that we could kind of answer, and we're just gonna take a very short uh, I'm gonna say two minute break.
All right, the mic is back. Whoops. The, I'm like, we're back. So one of the things that Shirley is now discovering is that the ventilation in this room oh, yeah. is terrible. Yeah. So that's actually one of the main reasons <laughs> for taking a break. You just open the door and all the cool air comes rushing yeah. in. So um, I'm sorry that I had to tell you about that before you were morning. like, I'm gonna wear this wonderful sweater. <laughs> <laughs> and it's but, so cool um, outside. One of these days, I'm gonna have I'm, all this like expensive fancy equipment. One of these days I'll have a good setup going on. But okay, so I think we're, we're we've got um, about 45 minutes left of this mm -hmm. session. So we're gonna uh, keep pushing through and try to see if we can take some next steps to pull stuff from the data and then put it into this SVG. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think our goal for today is drawing one flower with okay. data, and if and then stretch goal is drawing all of them with data. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. I usually like to give an exercise to the viewers to do oh. after, and then they can share stuff on Twitter, or I, if I make a page on the Coding Train website, there's a way for people to share their projects. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do, well, we can also give a prompt. Whatever we don't get to, we can ask okay. the viewers to complete, and you'll be amazed at what they'll do. Yeah, well, actually, I'm actually now thinking it might be even easier to potentially, well, we'll see. Okay. We'll, we'll see. Okay. Um, okay, so the next thing, we're gonna do is yeah a new cell and by the way you can like reorder reorder any right. of these cells and they'll be fine um, and so uh, now we're gonna start with a curly brace like that yeah okay. and then we can close the curly brace um, and then everything in these curly braces in observable will be executed as JavaScript oh oh yeah. because I'm I'm not doing, this is, this is, this not, is not JavaScript? Uh, like I the pedal path up here, I mean it sorry. is, but it. Sorry, I guess I should restate that. <laughs> that everything in there will be, uh, that you can do multi-line JavaScript Got in there. Got it. Yeah. So this is not a D3 thing we're doing right now. This is, this is specific observable. to observable. Yeah. Okay. And I could put like character turns in there and then I can just type my JavaScript in? Yeah. Um, and okay. so let's. Uh, there's. This is the like one thing that's going to be different from if you do like an index HTML, okay. um, and uh, because in index HTML you would just like create an H like a SVG element. Yes. Um, but here, what we're going to do is I think we're going to call it const um, SVG I is don't like equal to, use to const. really. <laughs> Really? No, no one should be like me, weirdo. No, it's good to use const. People should use const. Do you const. just like uh, it just freaks want me out. let or? No, it's I have a hang up. Uh, let's use const. Okay. This is good. Var? No, 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 no var. <laughs> var is worse. You yeah, uh, okay? I mean, um, const is the correct thing to use. Okay. Dom in all caps. Dot svg. Uh huh. Um. Open paren. I love this. Somebody should always just be telling me what to type. <laughs> this, is very, this is very calming. Okay. Soothing. Yeah. Um, and uh, you want to pass in a width. Um, and so how about we use the pedal size we had earlier? Oh, so like use the variable? Yeah. And oh. so it will go in there, okay. comma, and then let's say pedal size again. The width and height. Um, <laughs> well, actually, so pedal size is just 50. And you can imagine if we rotate them all around, oh. then we would probably want double that for both. Yeah. So this, we're gonna Kay. try just drawing one petal for now. Okay. Um, or sorry, one flower for Got now. It. We're now onto flowers. Got it. Um, and then let's do our scales. So um, the first thing we wanted was a scale linear um, to do uh, translate um, the IMDB rating uh -huh. to the size, Got right? It. So if you open up this data. Uh huh. And let's open up one of the objects. Some of these names are great. Days of Thunder. Um, I just realized. Oh yeah, uh, I think I've actually seen. Yeah. Embarrassingly enough. I don't know if that's embarrassing or just. <laughs> I, um, but uh, we we need to do some really easy data cleaning. Like we, okay. um, like they're all in strings. We want these numbers as numbers. Yes, but that yeah. that's gonna be fine. Um, five point nine. Wow. Um, so yeah, so I think what we need is IMDb rating and okay. IMDb votes for, for this one. Okay. So let's go down below and um, let's... And it's in a variable called data. Yeah, Perfect. so what we want to do is let's go, let's make um, a scale linear first. Let's call okay. it const, uh, so let's call it a size scale Okay. is equal to d3.scalelinear. Like that? 
Keep yes. Moving. This is a disaster. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, and then like open paren, close paren. Um, and then for this, we need a domain and a range. And so for us to get the domain, we need to get that from the data. Mm -hmm. But we could also like kind of make it up if we wanted to. I mean, I'm not, I'm just saying like, <laughs> like we know the ratings are between zero and 10, aren't they? No bad idea? <laughs> It's not something you ever want to do with data. Okay, okay. I just mean we're prototyping, we're experimenting, we're playing around here. Like, uh, okay, we'll I get use it from this data. No, <laughs> I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to give people good habits. Okay, good <laughs> habits, everybody. Don't. I have lots of bad habits. Um, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use something called a D three scale. No, no, sorry, D three dash array. Um, and in D three dash array we have something called dot extent. And what that does is we pass in um, an uh, array minimum and then, maximum. yeah. Oh, and it gives you the minimum maximum back. Yeah, okay. very easy. I, I, that's good, we should do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna say, so would I, could I do something like min max equals, uh, <laughs> equals D, it's never this I bad. Extend? Uh, yeah. Extend, <laughs> and then the array I'm passing in is just data? Yeah. But do I need to give it like what field I'm looking for in so there? So in, and then comma, and then you're gonna pass it a function that's the iterate, uh, sorry, the accessor. So pass in a function. I would do something, can I do some crazy magic like this? Yeah, you can. Okay. Um, but you want to give it the, so um, what, so, uh, but you want uh, to pass as input the D, like a, like the individual the, data the element. element. So I'll call or it like I, record. I what do you use? Uh, so in D3, Sample? we use, we say D. Oh, we D. We just say D. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then we say, um, and then you say, yeah, dot, yeah, perfect. So I want the extent, the minimum and maximum mm -hmm. in the array uh, and I'm, I'm using a function to say which element of the array. So yes. this is like, uh, what would you normally name this? I said min max, but like, would uh, you call this like extent no, rating? No, I usually or something? just say like uh, rating min max or something, rating, basically. Okay. Yeah. And then I would do the same thing for what was the other variable we want? Uh, or should we just do one variable right now? No, we can do both. Um, so what I'm was the other one? Votes, I think. Votes. Yeah. So votes min max, and I would just say IMD. Whoops, IMDb uh, votes. Yeah. Okay. And then, so then, in size scale, we will pass in that rating min max. But we need the min. Oh, it just, it. It's an array. What is this? It's an so array with the index you, zero is the min. Do you want to just uh, console log? Oh, so you can you console log? You can console log. Like I just type console mm -hmm. log? And then, um, but then you just have to open up your. Oh, it doesn't show up some magic can, way here. No, 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 no. <laughs> that would be nice. But it, it just console logs in yeah. there. I see. Yeah. So oh, uh -oh. undefined. Uh oh. Oh wait, wait, wait. Uh, do you want to go back to yeah? Open up Jurassic Park. We can do Jurassic Park, and then let's say I. Oh, because then it's a string. Um, Is it because it's a string? I need to convert it to a number. You like, think that that's? Oh, probably like, yeah. So um, like, do a plus. Like parse. Oh, you can do plus. P what's plus? So plus is shorthand for parse int. Oh, really? Like in in all the world. But undefined. No, no, I didn't. I had to run it. I didn't. Oh, look. No, you did. You did run it. So what are we doing? No, but I didn't wrong? run it again. No, we oh, did. No. What are we doing wrong? Let's see. So how about <laughs> we? Meanwhile, I'm gonna add some white space in here. <laughs> um. <laughs> huh. Let's Hold see. Hold on. Sometimes the chat is very good at telling me what Ooh. we did wrong while you look. Okay. It's an object, not an array. It is. The oh, data. stupid me. Okay. So we have to turn that into an array? Thank you, chat. So then what we want to do here is say, we can say dot then, and then we can say, let's just get the values. Oh, I use low dash. Sorry, I'm so used to using low dash. I'm going to go grab low dash. I don't even know what that is. Oh, 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 here, here, <laughs> hold on. I'll explain it. I've like taken <laughs> over your computer. I'm sorry, hold on. Good low dash. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so this is low dash. Um, and it's just really easy. Yeah, it's like a, a library that lets you do stuff with underscore. 
Isn't that called underscore? Yeah, so the first <laughs> iteration was called underscore. And oh, somebody, Lodash is underscore. Lodash is an extension of underscore. Okay, okay. Um, your chat but, is great. But wait, wait, you can require it below? You're going to use it? Yeah, you can require things anywhere. So that's why you can oh, um, okay. you can move the cells around. So now this made it an array? Yeah. Because you low dashed it? Yes. And then now if I run this? Then it should work. And there we go. Yay. Okay, got it. Okay, so, but the plus is like parsing. Okay, so what goes in scale linear now? Do so I have to do them individually? No, or I can, I can no, for zero? because with oh, scale linear, okay. if you want to look at um, the scale linear. Um, and then. Sorry, we also want, did we want number of petals? Yes. So like petal scale? Or no, petal number scale? N yeah, I call it num petal scale. Num, num petal scale. scale. Um, and then I want the votes min max. Yes. Yeah. And you want uh, scale quantize because you oh, want right. to go from linear, sorry, continuous to discrete. Got it. And so right now what you're doing, so let me just um, nitpick something, <laughs> which is, sorry, <laughs> um, just for yeah. like, so, like, just so we know um, what they are, I like to just put them into domain so we know that this is the What's domain. domain? Oh, so, okay, sorry. You explain um, it, I'll type it. And uh, domain, so D3 has like its own set of vocabulary, right? So domain is, you can think of it as input. Um, I also like to think of it as the raw data. Um, and the output they call range, Got so dot it. range. Got so it's it. like kind of like Got mathematics. It. Okay. Um, and so after domain, let's do a dot range. Got it. And let's say the scale. This is what I'm mapping it to. Yes. Ah, okay. So I. So uh, my size was like this is a size. That's a size of fifty. Yes. So I would say if that's like the biggest it would be. I could do like twenty-five to seventy-five or something like that. That's the. That's a great intuition. Uh -huh. um, but because we're going to use the size scale, we're going to use transform, transform scale. Yeah. So we probably want a range of zero to one, Got it. Yes. or probably zero point two five, or something. Okay. Um, and and the syntax is we have to pass it in as an array. Oh, so like this. Mm-hmm. And then this range is discrete, yes. so it's the options. So I could have like five petals, seven petals, or ten petals, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that like a weird set of numbers that I just put in there? I mean, you can do whatever you want. It's okay. your flower. All right. <laughs> five petals, seven petals, or my personal favorite, 12. Oh, you said 10. 10. <laughs> um, yeah. I have sound effects. It's Ooh, very exciting. Is, that, <laughs> what, is the buzzer for like if you're. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Usually I'm just here by myself, so I'm just pressing <laughs> buttons. Wait, can you press some more? Are we getting distracted? We're, all, we're I tight like this on one. time. Yes. <laughs> Um, but the way that you can think of it is, um, uh, now I don't know what I'm saying. Um, uh, what was I saying? <laughs> we, we were good. We have scale yeah. linear, we have uh, scale quantize. Yes. Okay, so uh, now that we have the scales, let's go calculate um, what we're going to draw. Right, And okay. so let's call it cost, uh, let's say cost flowers. Let's just go and make all the flowers. All the flowers? Because we could make one and then we could just change the index from the array and then we see different ones. You, let's make them all. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I should say that this, if anybody's watching who um, this is their first time coding, mm -hmm. this is pretty difficult, I think, in terms to follow probably because yeah. there's a lot of terminology. esoteric terminology. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons why I enjoy P5, um, yeah. it does, it's, it tries at least as best as it can to give Be you friendly. this very like friendly starting point. Mm -hmm. What's wonderful about this is like in one line of code, you, we've kind of like parsed, you know, we've, in, just like a very, not one line of code, but very little bit of code. We've like parsed this data file, yeah. we're like getting min max, we're scaling the range, we yeah. have quantized, bot, all, the, all these like really common set of things you would want to do when working with data yeah. in a very succinct Yes. Way. But I can imagine for somebody who's new to this, this can be hard to follow. Yeah. And it's a different way of thinking. Exactly. Right. But let's make the flower. Um, or the flower. You want to put, you want to make one flower. Let's make, I don't know. Does the chat have an opinion? Um. <laughs> the chat is going to say make all the flowers. I'm let's make all you. the flowers. <laughs> let's make all the flowers. Okay. Uh, does that make you nervous? It does, but let's do it. Wait, you know what? We okay. have a half an hour. 
Okay, let's just make one <laughs> flower. Let's make one flower and see what happens. Okay, okay, let's just, yeah, flower is equal to. Okay. And then let's create an object. Like, oh, like a blank object. Yeah. Object literal. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. And um, so to create the flower, uh -huh. we need, um, <sighs> let's see. And let's um, just let's just decide that we're gonna. There's, the data has 135 things in it. Should we just go with Days of Thunder, <laughs> Deck Zero, as our first like flower? Do you like that one? That, uh, do you I wanna mean, uh, we I, we could be here for a very long time <laughs> trying to pick what movie. Let's <laughs> just do that. I'm sure. Oh, Forrest Gump. Let's do Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. There's Where? also Pocahontas, I think, but Forrest Gump is right now, here. I think. Oh, wait, wait. No, yeah, I I want to look through all of them. Okay, all right, I'll I'll wait here. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oh no! Dude, this is—I feel like whichever one I pick, there's gonna—I I, there's gonna be something. I really do like this movie, Wally. To be honest with you. And me. you should do Wally. Okay, I feel like that's—I like to—I like to be family friendly when at all possible. I feel like there's no <laughs> risk here with Wally. It's rated G. Yes. Index ninety-two. Okay. Okay. Do you want to just like do like a const index or something, just so you don't have yeah, to type? Yeah. Okay. I const guess. Const Wally equals ninety-two. I just said, I just realized something, which is I was like, do you want to create a variable so you don't have to write 92 over and <laughs> over, and now you have to write Wally over yeah, and over? Yeah, but we get to type Wally. Yeah. And I wish I had like a Wally like sound, sound effect, effect or something, but I don't. Okay, so let's think about what we need to draw this flower. Okay. Um, do you want to take a look at my flowers again? Um, okay, so to draw this flower, um, we need, um, actually, we might well, only need. Am I going to, can I use a I gotta like minimize this here. Can I use this pedal path? Yeah. So let's do this. Um, let and us don't I just do like a little loop and like just keep rotating it around to draw the flower? Yes. So, <laughs> um, but you need data. Oh, um, okay. Okay. So I'm gonna draw. It, we're not gonna draw. It, we're gonna draw it even with the data right now. Yes. Okay. We're gonna draw with the data right now. Um, and so let's do this. Let's um, figure out the number of petals we need. So let's go below Wally and say, um, yeah, uh, num petals. And num petal scale is a function that we can pass num petal scale. Oh, yeah, there it is. I was yeah. looking for that. <laughs> um, and then we can pass in the data, data index for Wally. Wally. Uh, and it's called a uh, votes. IMDb. Oh, IMDb votes. Votes, yeah. And then we want to plus it. We want to do a plus beforehand so that it becomes. Is yeah. that a thing you can do in JavaScript? Like anywhere? Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> I think this is a thing if you work with a lot of data, <laughs> yeah. like cleaning data. I like to type parse int. D would you like to? No, keep no, <laughs> no, no, no. I want the plus here. Okay, and then I just pass that in. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. And then. And then I'm going to do the size. Right? Sure. Size. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I could call this petal size. Sure. And that's going to be the size scale and then the rating. Yes? Yes. Um, you already have something called petal si scale size mm. above. P size. Sure. Petal. Pet size. Sure. All right. <laughs> um, it's your flower. <laughs> <laughs> Variable <laughs> naming is not my strong suit. I don't know if anybody's that no. good at it. Um, okay, so now we have, do you want to console log um, both of those, or do you, you're like, I don't. Well, let's keep, we're, we're, we're good, I'm okay. good, I feel confident. Okay, so. I mean, normally I would, I, it's good practice console log. The reason why I'm sort of avoiding it is kind of have this like very small, you know, I don't, I guess, like I guess I could console, I just feel like I'm not. Uh, sure, uh, yeah. it's okay, let's move on. Um, when, when something goes wrong, we'll console log. Okay, <laughs> so for, for, the pa for the flower, let's uh, just put in the size. Let's just, you know, one of the things we want is like, the size. Like, oh, should I do that object structuring thing, you mean, where I just do this? Yeah, sure. Um, wait, wait, wait. Not yet for the num petals. Oh, okay. So the way that we want to think about the num petals is that that's purely a number, right? That's oh. going to tell me 5, 7, or 10. That's why I'm going to use the loop. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. And so what we want to do is we want to create an object within this object. Ah, okay. Um, and we want to um, create, uh, so let's kind of, yeah, go and then say, let's call it petals. Okay. Oh, I'm, am 
think I see where you're going with this. Yeah, and then there is a function in underscore called times, or low dash. So if you do underscore dot times, and then you pass in num pedals. This is crazy. And this is insane. <laughs> And uh, wait, wait, no, 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 and then you have a, a uh, and then you pass in a function after the num pedals, <laughs> and the input you get is i, so the index. Uh -huh. So what's happening here is lo this low dash dot times. Yes. What it does is it iterates the number of times. times. So let's say num pedals is five. It's just like a for loop with i. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, and so what I want to do there is return another object. Oh, I don't have to say return, though, because... No. Yeah. Uh, well, if you want to create an object, you, you need to do the curly braces and then return curly braces. And then, but you need to wrap that in curly braces. Oh, no, no, if it's, but oh, it's really? more than one, if it's just one line of code, I don't... Like, okay, let's, let me be long-winded about it, and then we'll sort of see what arrow syntax we exactly need. But okay. yes, I can do this. Um, and then in here, what we want is the rotation uh -huh. of ah. your pedal. Got it. So I'm going to, um, uh, is, the, is it in radians or degrees? <laughs> in so in other words, SVG, I could do like, Basically, in SVG, it is degrees. Through. So, like in other words, I'm going to say uh, I divided by how many total pedals do I have? Num pedals. Uh, uh, yeah. 360 times I. Like this, you mean? Yeah. But this is That seems. That's. But this is just returning a value. Wait, no, 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 no. Wait, no, 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 no. No, wait. Hold on. Is that right? Is that? Well, because yes, 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 yes. You're right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I wanted to return an object because. Oh, you mean I just, but so I put like uh, angle, angle or something. Angle, yeah, oh, or oh, degrees or whatever you want. Because I also want to return the pedal path. Got it. And I'll explain why. Um, and you mean this thing? Your your pedal path, yeah. And the reason for it is once we go and do all of the flowers, I was so thinking that sure we can, we can I was thinking that we'll go and do like three other petal paths so that your flowers can look different. Got it. I'm pretty sure that I can skip the return because this is just an object literal. Uh, it's one line of code. It'll get returned. I've tried that before. It doesn't work for you? No, but maybe it will w work for you. We'll find out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so now, do you want to run that? Oh yeah. Let's let's console log flower. I <laughs> we have to console log this. And then what I'm going to do just when I'm console logging, actually, well, so, so I think if I do this, clear the console, and this is what I'm running. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing in that array. Um, so that's a mistake, right? There should be stuff in there. There should be. Um, so what did I do wrong? So let's well, add let's, the... let's also console log num pedals to make sure that we oh, do have... Oh, right. I have to copy paste everything so that I don't have to type. Oh, <laughs> if we did... Oh, it's undefined. Ah, okay. So something went wrong with here, num pedals. Num pedal scale. Is this way of quantizing the range actually correct? Yeah. What Wait, does the chat say? <laughs> I think they're talking about something else. Oh, I think they're talking about the... Yeah. Ah, okay. Um, scale quantize. Let's find scale quantize. Uh, Shirley's looking up something in the documentation, which in theory I could show you. No, we're, we're right. We're right. Look, range one, two, four. So that's right. Okay. Let's so hold on. Let's right now our issue is not this. No. Our issue is just num that pedals. when we run this, we get undefined at num pedals. Yeah. So let's go Wait, and yeah. let's log plus data Wally. Yeah. And plus data Wally IMDB loads. Okay. Yes. So let me say two console logs. We're gonna look at plus data Wally. 
and we're going to look at... Uh, if you do a comma in the same console log, it would... Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> you're right. You're absolutely right. Man! Uh, not a number. Hold on. Oh, it's running it automatically for me? Okay. Yeah, so it So we runs got this, and then I am... Ooh, it's got a <laughs> comma ah, in it. Okay. So we have to... The I comma, the plus won't work with the comma. Yes. Uh, does parse S int work with that? One thing that I've used is this. I think this works. Oh, yeah, yeah. But let's try a parse int. No. Parse int will just go until the comma. Oh, no, no, no. But I didn't console log. Oh, I'm oh, doing oh, the oh. wrong thing. <laughs> Oh, it'll just go until the comma? I think. So we would let's, let's do it. 705. Yeah, yeah. it goes so until the comma. So let's try. I mean, we could obviously. Number. Mm, but did I do it again? I can't tell. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's not. So we do have to do. We could just use parse in, and it's OK. The data's kind of a little bit. Well, oh. so, <laughs> <laughs> so how do I remove? I, I do um, a string replace. Oh, yeah, just a replace. Uh, and so I can just do replace any comma. commas with nothing. Yeah. So if this, I run this, um, I see that. And now I can and use plus again. Yeah. So this, and I probably should put that in a separate variable or something, but I'm going to just I think that's cool. uh, put it all right here. I wonder w what order it will do it. Let's see. Let's see. What order they'll do the. Ten. Uh, well, oh, then no. you have to console log. Oh, I have to con no. I am console logging numpedals. No. Oh, you are. Oh, because it went to the scale. Yeah, yeah. It 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 made a ten because we quantized it. Ah. So it's not undefined anymore. Oh wait, no. It's because in IMDb votes, we have to do the replace there too. Oh, we should do it here. Yeah. Dot replace. Right, 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 right. So there's a definitely a more efficient way to do this at the source somehow probably, yeah. but this will do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should um, we should have done it at the source. Um, we should have done the data cleaning at the source. Yeah. But it ten makes sense. It's a lot of votes. <laughs> you don't think it should be ten? No, no. Can we can we can we still? Uh, <laughs> you're gonna have a hundred petals. Oh, okay, okay. I'm more yeah. satisfied with this answer. Okay, great. You're gonna have a hundred petals. No, I was just. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was giving it, we're going to give it some, we'll give it. Uh, but you're like only going to have one pedal? I'm just like, <laughs> giving it. I don't know. So okay, fine. Good. I'll do multiples of three. <laughs> okay. 9, 12, 15, 18. <laughs> Oops. This is just a demonstration. Okay, I'm sorry. Proof of concept. <laughs> the, the, the beautiful creative minds of the viewers will design something. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now. I think we can go back to this, yeah. and we can take a look at our flower, and we should see 15 yes. undefined things. Yes. Which is not, were we supposed to see 15 undefined? No. no. <laughs> but at least we have 15 so things. So let's try return. And then now you have to do the curly braces around oh, it. Oh, right. OK, let's try that. Interesting that that didn't work. Um, yeah, I wish it worked like that. And then we've got, yeah, look at that. Well, that's cool. This is like the craziest kind of coding thing I've ever done. I'm going to, can I make this a little smaller? No, because I just like, it's bothering me that it's wrapping the code, but I'll, I'm going to, I'll live with that. We can, we can, okay. I can move more closer to you. No, the other way is the way you need to move. Oh, no. No, 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 no I need to, to close your <laughs> It's fine. It's okay. fine. We're good. We're good. Okay, okay um, we've got our flower. We have our data. Okay, yeah. now comes the hard part. And I should really call this movie index because. We're going to change it. It's not going to be Wally anymore. No, right? well, you know what right, we, need, we should it. be doing? We should be calling this D is equal to data oh, 92, 92. Yeah. because later on. Oh, yeah. And also, uh, this would make our code so much less insane. <laughs> because then we can just have D. Yes. Then we can just have D. D. We don't need this console log anymore. Uh, this has to you, be a yeah, D. D. And then this this is still the same, but that's better. And this will be okay. so much more readable. Okay. Cool. Okay. So this is the hard. Uh, and in theory, just to point this out, I think we could have, when we loaded the data here, we could yeah. have cleaned up the commas there. Yes. So that would have been good practice. Place. Clean up the commas up there. Okay. Share with me your observable notebook that does that. Later. Okay. 
Okay. So we have seven minutes to do the hard hardest part. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna <laughs> go uh, explain. Okay. D three enter update exit. <laughs> okay. Brilliant. Your your camera. Yeah. Is oh, it camera? went to it went it it overheated. It's okay. Oh no. It's gonna it's easy to turn. This one is not overheating because I have a fan pointed at it. All right. So I'm gonna try and explain this really quick. Okay. Um. So D three has something called enter update exit and for those that use things like react or Vue and etc this is basically how it, the concept is how um, react and Vue and those all those like virtual dom does the updates underneath the hood um, and conceptually what's happening is um, with d3 the way that you need to think about things isn't by the dom elements um, but rather, you need to kind of like flip your mindset and um, think about it data first. So D3 is called data-driven documents, and this is why. Um, so let's say we have a data set of five numbers. Let's just make it really easy. We'll just say like 0, 5, 10, 20, 100, let's say. Um, and what we want to do is use our data to dictate the DOM elements we create. Got it. So um, it's called enter, update, exit because in D3, the most common um, set of uh, functions you'll see is something that's like um, uh, dot. So let's. I'm going to start just writing this code. Let's say we select the SVG with D3. Select, so that's like an, an HTML s select. <laughs> My brain stopped working for a second. Wait, what? You're select, you're, that's like going, that's finding the DOM element in SVG, uh -huh. pulling it out and putting it in a variable. Into, yeah, in, yeah we're, we're giving the SVG element to D3. Got it, um, okay, And that makes I've sense. already, I'm assuming, let me, let me put it into quotes actually. So um, we can pass in any sort of a CSS selector in here and D3 will go and find it. Got it. Um, and then the next line you'll commonly see is select all. And I'm going to say path because that's the SVG element we want. Got it. But right now, let me, OK, so I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to draw, let's pretend this is our ca SVG canvas. Um, and right now, there's no, there's no DOM elements. So what are we selecting? Um, and the answer is we're selecting nothing. Okay. This is going to return you an empty, empty selection. selection. So we can put stuff in there by yes. entering, updating, and then exiting. Yes. So we say we call this function called dot data, and we pass in. I'm going to say I'm going to call this data, which is going to get confusing for us in a bit. Um, but we're going to pass in. Do you want to give it another name so it's so less what confusing? So that's what what is that in our example right now? Uh, that's the is that the Wally object? Uh, oh, that's a good point. Okay, so let's call this. Um, you know what? Let's call this the. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Is it like the flower data? It's like the individual data for that one flower? I'm going to, let's separate this away from our flowers okay. and say this is just conceptual. Oh, got it. Okay. Um, because if we try to use the actual numbers, it will be a little it, too it, confusing. It, it, so let's just say it's conceptual and it's, um, you know, uh, our numbers, let's say. Yeah, values or something. It, that's a better one. Yeah. yeah. Values. And this is, we'll pass in values. And. Um, we want to also, actually, let's just do this. Um, and what this function does is it returns um, something. Um, it returns, OK, actually, I'm, gonna, I'm only today going to explain enter, because we have no time for update and exit. <laughs> um, so this is enter.append path. Oh, no. OK, that's it. Um, and this series of four functions is what you see the most often in D3. Let me explain what's happening. So at dot data, D3 will go and look at this set of values. So it'd be like, okay, this is the SVG and this is our data. And we have 
0, 5, 10, 20, 100. We have five elements, and hey, look, there's no, we see absolutely no elements. Yeah. Okay, that means we have to enter all of them. God. And that means in this enter, dot enter, what's happening is, um, so data will say, okay, what we need to do to make our DOM um, be the same as our data is that we need to go and create five elements and bind each of these data to those five elements. Got it. So at dot enter, um, that's how you're accessing this enter selection, and in the dot append, you're actually creating the path elements in the DOM. And so what it would do is like, let's say these are our path elements. So you have multiple path elements within one SVG. Yes. Um, so this whole function will create these five path elements in this SVG, and it will in the SVG, oh, sorry, in the path element itself, it will remember this zero, yep, this, this five. five, this 10, this 20, and this 100. Got it. And then what we might want to do is say dot adder, let's say these are circles. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to say this is a circle. And we can say, I want the radius to be my data. Got and it. so I'm like doing a little thing, but like this yes. is a function. You're getting 0, 5, 10, 20. That's where you return the individual element from the data array, which is called values in our case. Yes. Um, so yeah, so this is going to be like drawing a circle with zero radius, five radius, ten radius, twenty radius, a hundred radius. Got it. Um, and so that's 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 what's happening. So um, when we say like update and exit, then what D three does is when we call this dot data function, it will let's say we now have these three these two elements in our SVG. And because we created it before. Yeah. And now we're like, okay, this is the new data set that we want to update to. Yeah. Then um, D3 will know, um, okay, we need to, cr we, uh, we uh, already have two elements and we need to create three more so that we can match it. Got it. And I'm going to go, this, this might be a little too much information. <laughs> We're just going to go crazy mode, but if we pass in a key, uh -huh. a key function, let's say that I'm just going to say that the key for each of these uh, elements is the data itself. Yeah. And let's say that this data, so let's say that this is um, 5 and this is um, 50, then D3 will know that we want to keep this one. We want to enter these four, and then that we want to exit this 50. Okay. That but was we don't need that right now because we're going to have a no. fixed set of data. We just we want just to enter, enter a pen. It. Got it. We just want data to enter, enter a pen. Okay. Um, and uh, <laughs> do we have time for that? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Are you sure? Yeah. Uh, All right. Okay. Let's Here create this flower. Okay. So, so I'm going to say D3 select. Did I try to make a new cell or I'm still doing it here? You can, we can do it here. Um, the one thing is that we need to return the SVG element. At the very end? Yeah. So I would say like return SVG just there? Yeah. But here I'm going to say D3 select. Yes. <laughs> and then I'm selecting the SVG. Mm -hmm. And then now I'm going to chain all these functions. So now I'm going to select. Oh, I, I see. So, ah, that's why it's doing that. Select all. Yes. The path is what I'm doing here. Yes. And then I'm going to the data. In this case is the My flower? flower. The flower. Yes, the flower. Oh, yes. it has the petal size and yes. the petals. OK. The data is the flower. I'm looking over here <laughs> at the whiteboard because it's helping me. I don't need this extra function, right? I could just enter this right now. Yeah, right? you don't need the key function. And I don't need any arguments to enter. That's just saying, no. that's here it's, I go. I'm yeah. entering the data. Yes. <laughs> and with each record, but this is not an array, so it's each property. Oh, I'm sorry. You, you have to put that into an array. Oh, OK, because it's just one. Otherwise, we could have done our, our magic stuff up here, 
um, we could have made all the flowers yes, out of that full array. We could have made flowers and made all these objects, each one, got it. Yeah. Okay, so we have this one, we're just entering the one, mm -hmm. but still, and then we append. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I, I think I'm gonna just, is it crazy for me to do this? Uh, you need the dot though, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then append. Yes. And then this, I'm appending to the DOM. Yes. I'm appending just the path? Yes. So what but you're saying. don't I need to specify what's going on in here with, with what path? So try that. Try executing that. And then uh, let's inspect. If we go back up, uh -huh. let's inspect this. Oh, just, uh, I see. So I execute it. Uh -huh. And then I'm going to do inspect. Mm -hmm. And oh, there's all this extra stuff. Wait, uh, can you inspect right here? Perfect. Um, so I see the view box SVG. Mm -hmm. But hmm. there's no. Okay, let's go back and see what we did wrong. Don't I need oh, 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 sorry. Um, so right now, um, the little bit of difference is that we don't need quotation marks here because oh, we're passing that's in. That's the, the SVG variable. Yeah, so this is the actual SVG right. element. It's this one right here. Yes. It's that's the yeah. thing that's starting everything yeah. for us. So, so now, now we should it, have... Oh, and the, you, do running it, I don't have to click that. I just no. do, what is it, command enter like this? Uh, shift enter. Shift enter. Yeah. Okay. And then... Inspect. Right. Oh, man. Why does it do that? Okay. Uh, but I'm in the, just in the wrong place. Oh, yeah. Wait, uh, do right here. It, yeah. There we Perfect. go. Um, path. We have one path. Why do we only have one Well, we one only have path? one. Oh, but we have both have multiple petals. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Okay, okay, wait, hold on, hold on. Um, it is because um, we only have one flower. So actually, um, I'm going to just uh, actually select all the groups. <laughs> wait, what? So it's a SVG has a thing called a group element. Oh, you mean I actually just say groups? Uh, G, G, G. 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 Like so this? Yeah. With in quotes. Yes. Oh, uh, okay. We're going to make a bunch of paths. Uh, we're going to make a bunch of groups. Groups. And so, um, do you trust me? Can I? Yeah, we, go for we it. We don't have much yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, so, go for it. Um, <laughs> this is much better. Sorry. Uh, so what we're going to do is um, we're just going to call this flowers. Um, and what this does is makes a uh, group element for each flower we have, which right now is just one. And so, like you said, we should be seeing one group element in here. Ah, uh, okay, I see that. And then, what we want to do, because we've structured our data this way, we've structured, we have like a date, like an object, like a nested object. Right. And so now, we want to do is for each flower, we want to select all the paths but that, oh, each, got it. For each flower, select all the paths. Oh, and then we're going to go get the petal. Yes, we're going to get past, for each flower group, we're going to get past the data that's been bound on it. And the data that's being bound is this data. So then we can access the d.petals, um, which means that it's going to return our array of petals. That's, that's right, yeah, right here. Oh, I'm bad at this. Right here. Um, and we can say enter, append, path. And now we should be able to go up here, inspect the SVG. And hopefully in each group, we will ah. see the correct number of paths. paths. Awesome. But the paths don't have paths in them. No. So now <laughs> I think you should do the honors for this okay. one. So go here. For each of the paths, let's give it the d attribute. So dot adder. Oh, this is now giving an attribute. And then, okay. yeah, so so in quotations, oh, d, d attribute. Oh, d, like the first thing we learned. Yes. Yes. Like so all the way up wherever that was. Right. Right there. Yes. D equals. Yes. Oh, OK, OK, OK. okay. It's all coming together. Yeah. And then, and then get. we're going to pass in a function where the input is the variable d. And then we're going to say, oh, I don't think we so, need Okay, okay. Um, is going to be just a d dot pedal path because that's what we have. We have the pedal path right here, and that's what we're accessing. Got it. And so now, if you close it, run it. 
But where are we getting the angles? Shouldn't the not angles? yet, not yet. Oh, not yet. You're We're getting ahead of me. Okay. Um, and okay. so now if you run it, ah, it's because you need to translate right. things. Okay. Yes. Um, and so now let's do dot adder on the path and do transform and D. The and then that's where you can uh, a string literal. Right. OK, yes. I forgot what the transform looks like. It's somewhere up here, right? Oh, uh, this. Yes, transform, but Got it. now translate we're doing. Translate and rotate. Uh, just rotate for just this rotate. one. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you why in a bit. Um, you Something like this. D right? dot, yes, perfect. But you want to close that in parentheses. Uh, rotate, paren paren open, paren, open paren, close paren, close paren. And now we should be able to see something. Is this correct? Unterminate. Oh, there it is. Right? There's the floor. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> so that I just, but I can just translate that a tiny bit. And like. then the reason why we have the group element is so that you can translate. No, don't, oh. don't do that one. You want to be transforming the entire oh, flower. So this. Adder. Well, you, you want to, you don't want that. Yes. Transform. Ah. Tr <laughs> transform and then uh, I, the I can just make something up here. Like tra uh, translate. Like I can just move it over a little bit right now. Yes. Um. <laughs> I'm like overly excited. I Oh, whoa. Did that? Maybe I just didn't move it over enough? I think uh, you should move it over uh, the pedal size that you declared up top. Or, or you can do that too. Where Where did I do that? Um, oh, I not use it. So, so um, we're not using size scale right now, which we could, but we're not. Yeah, wait, hold on. Do uh, run this. Oh, there yeah. we go. Okay. <laughs> so now I could change the movie, right? I could say, like, yeah. go back to Days of Thunder. And we only have three pedals. <laughs> and do you want to put the size in there? Oh, we don't really have a lot of time. No, you no, want to no, put no, the no. size yeah, in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we got we got, okay. we, we got this. We got this. Okay. We 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 totally got this. <laughs> okay. okay. So um, in the transform part, instead we can do uh, we can uh, return a function again, and I'm gonna make this into a string literal. Oh, I see what you're going to do. And here I'm going to say um, 0.5, pedal 0.5? size, oh. pedal size. Don't you want to do divided by two or no? No, because we did for uh, the. Uh, got it, got it. Yes, yeah, yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Got it, got it. <laughs> do, do other people got it though? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to do you <laughs> this last part is like so rushed. Uh, D dot pet I'm size. I'm sorry about this. I never, I, I always go like an hour longer than I think that I'm going to go. I never have something that, but. Look at, look at this though. Pet size. And now if you do one, two, Go to Wally six, again because it has more. 92. That's awesome. And if I wanted to, just to say, like, right now it's just using default stroke and fill. Mm -hmm. Those would go as attributes, and they would end up, like, right down here. You can either do them on the path or the group. The group, they'll inherit the attributes from yes. the group. Yes. I'm going to do a really ah. quick thing, and in the next few minutes, I'm going to draw <laughs> all the minutes. flowers. In the next few minutes, okay. I'm going to draw all the flowers, okay. and I'm going to show okay. you that we did all of the hard work already. Okay, okay. And the rest is actually just gonna okay. magically happen. Okay, okay, Are you I'm ready? Are you ready? Music here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say this uh, is flowers data. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> explain it. Um, so we're gonna say this is flowers data and we're going to go through all of our data and we're gonna loop through them and we're going to for each of them, return the same. Okay, return the same information, and I'm going to just put these calculations into my function for looping through instead. Um, and then, if we've done this part correctly, then we should have flowers data. 
And seriously, if we did this part correctly, and I hope we did, <laughs> then we should draw all the flowers on top oh, of but so you just need that little translate to put them next to each other. Put that in there, put that in there. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have to go. Okay, okay, okay. While you're putting okay, that in okay. there, I'm going to talk to the camera for okay, a second. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for watching. <laughs> I'm sorry this is going to end very abruptly. So I'm just warning you, Shirley's adding a little bit more codes again very abruptly. A very appropriate song for right now would be ah, this. I did something. Thank you, AI 2.0 Brockman, new member. So, like I said, this is going to end very abruptly. Um, we're, we're not late yet. We have about 30 seconds to get to this uh, presentation that's happening here tonight. Um, I'll be back next week sometime. Uh, if you know, and maybe uh, Shirley will uh, and I will discuss this. And if there's anything I can do to like revisit this to kind of clean up or explain one last thing. But as soon as this is over, well, or as soon as I get to it. Um, I'm going to take the link to this observable notebook. I notice it says private, so I'm going to make it no longer private. And then I will add a link to the observable notebook in this video's description. So um, you'll be able to find that observable notebook. And if you make stuff with it, I think tweet it at me, at Schiffman, or Shirley on Twitter is at SXYWU. I want to have, like, I need a button and it just like pops up here. One of these days, all these overlay stuff. S X Y W U. You, yes. Got it. So tweet it at us, so like a little snapshot of the flowers you make. Um, like snapshot, is that a thing people say? Screenshot, whatever. Um, and then also maybe a link to your observable. Uh, how, yeah, and because and, we'd love to sort of check that out. I'm curious to see what people do with this. All right, how are we with our flowers? Uh, I tried to do something fancy. Oh, awesome. I love it. And, but <laughs> I'm going to do one thing, one extraneous thing, because then it will make it a lot prettier. <laughs> you can't help, you can't resist. I can't, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. We got this though. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Okay, this is actually proving to be more than I expected, <laughs> but we're committed now. Okay, so I'm committed to this. And I don't, I'm not even gonna explain it. Your, your keyboard is hard to it's type on. It's a disaster, on. yeah. No! OK, <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's not interpolate. OK, let's do interpolate warm. <laughs> We're going to make it work. We're going to make it work. <sighs> the attribute d3 dot interpolate warm, and then it takes a number between 0 and ooh. You're going to make it a function. No, it's 360. Uh -oh. Oh no 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 no! That or is the that is the right thing though. Num pedals, num pedals. I you know what? I got this. Three sixty times i. D dot angle divide by three sixty. It needs to be a n number between uh, zero and one. Hey, you're amazing. That was <laughs> awesome. Look at that. It's a ra oh, because it's sort of like a rainbow colored thing. Oh, yeah, I was trying to do it. Okay. No, no, you can't. You're not allowed to add any more code. <laughs> you have to stop. You have to stop. First of all, it's now officially 80 degrees in this room. Oh, my God. Because I had that. They came, they fixed the air. It was like working really well. Now it's like super hot in here. Um, again, I'm very sorry. This is going to end super abruptly. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for having um, me. People will ask their questions in the comments. Of, I will. Uh, if you have questions and I can't answer them, I will bug Shirley and answer them. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in and watching. Um, please make something with this. I'm going to, um, I guess, um, this is the URL. Even I just, can I quickly make this public? Yeah. How do I do that? You can just say publish. Publish. And people Oh, and it's actually just like this. Yeah. So there, this should be easy for people to find. Um, somebody, could, somebody could post it in the chat. That would be great. I'll add it to the video description like an hour from now, probably. And thank you so much. See you next week. Yay! Have a great day. Goodbye. Thank you.